Yes, sir, honey. It happened on one of them zippity doo dah days. Now, that's the kind of day when you can't open your mouth without a song jump right out of it. Zippity doo dah, zippity yay. My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine hit my way. I'm Ty Justice, and in this episode, I'm reviewing Walt Disney's most controversial, misunderstood, and suppressed film, Song of the South. Zippity Duda, Disney lovers. <laughs> Film and television are powerful tools that can showcase humanity's greatest flaws while at the same time highlighting its greatest strengths in the face of insurmountable adversity. Storytelling at its best can change our lives forever. From Alfred Hitchcock to Richard Donner, my mentors are many and their contributions to my worldview have been nothing short of priceless. Thanks to one particular hardworking, film-loving, single mom. So come with me as I explore entertainment from different eras on different formats that you've either never seen before or will never look at the same way again. I'm Ty Justice. Let's review. Here come, here come, here come right now. Let me see. Where was I? Oh, yes, 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 the head. Gotta have a head. Gotta get a head right quick. Need about this much tall. Yes, just about this much. I expect this just about right for the head. That biggity old rabbit won't get away this time. No, sir. Go yeah. catch him sure. I'll catch him sure. That, that, that's <laughs> what you said the last time before. And the time before that. And the, look. Let's just knock his head clean off. Oh, no, indeed. Ain't nothing smart about that. I'm gonna show him who the smartest is. And the top baby will do the rest. It's sure going to fool him, yes, sir. <laughs> Known by whispers or distant memories of theatrical screenings, or PAL VHS and Laserdisc pressings, Song of the South is a controversial oddity, kept alive by both those who love and loathe it. Those who have actually seen it, that is. Song of the South hasn't been released for many years. With that, he grabbed Real Rabbit for the tail and made for the dash him again the ground. But just then, Bear Rabbit's tail snapped off real short, and he took through the cotton patch like the dog was after. And from that day to this, the only tail that Bear Rabbit's got to his name was a little old ball of cotton. The last home video release was in 1990 on Laserdisc in Japan. Song of the South has never actually seen a home video release in the United States, the country where the film takes place. But why the controversy? Is Song of the South a racist film? Should it be continually banned? Is it worse than any other film of the period that dealt with the Reconstruction South? Let's find out. Song of the South is a part animation and part live action film, much like Mary Poppins and Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that was released to theaters in 1946 and is based on the Uncle Remus books written by Joel Chandler Harris in the late 19th century. Harris retells the folklore as it was told to him by slaves 
and he did his best to tell the stories as they were told to him, including the controversial yet painfully accurate dialect of the original storytellers. Now, if they sound ignorant, it's only because slaves were not allowed to educate themselves or be educated by anyone else. That was considered a crime. Because what do you get when you educate a slave? A revolution. The film follows a young boy played by Bobby Driscoll who visits his grandmother's plantation and befriends one of the workers, not slaves, named Uncle Remus. This was set after the Civil War, also called the Antebellum or Reconstruction South. Ah, oh, there now. Done gone and got something in your eye. And I ain't surprised. Things blowing around here the way they does. Nah. Appears to me like you was figuring on going someplace. I am. And nobody's gonna stop me. Well, now. If that don't bang my time. You know, I was just figuring on doing something like that myself. How'd you like old Uncle Remus to go along with you? Uncle Remus was played by radio actor James Basquette, Disney's first black film lead, who tells the boy tales of Br'er Rabbit, Fox, and Bear to help the youngster resolve his problems on the plantation that lead to animated segments sometimes beautifully mixed with live-action footage. I was going fishing, and I was just thinking how the flowers and critters is curious things. They can look in your heart and tell when it sings. If it's whistling a tune or singing a song, they'll all say howdy when you come along. Howdy, Uncle Remus. Good morning. Good morning, girls. Hello, Uncle Remus. Oh, good morning, Miss Nelly. How do you do? Quite a bit of it. How do you do? Say a bit of The film was a financial success, and the song Zippity Doo Dah won the 1947 Academy Award for Best Song. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine in my way. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Mr. Bluebird's on my shoulder. It's the truth. It's actual. Everything is satisfactory. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Yes, sir. Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Oh, plenty of sunshine in the way. Mr. Bluebird's on my shoulder It's the truth, it's actual Everything is satisfactual Zip-a-dee-doo-da, zip-a-dee-a Wonderful feeling, feeling this way James Basquiat got an honorary Oscar for his performance as Uncle Remus. Not a real one in an actual category, but an honorary one. Still counts, though. Basquette then was actually the first black man to get an Oscar of any kind. Now, the film was always controversial, especially the way the black character's language and dialect were handled. But that wasn't necessarily Disney's fault. He was just following the way the books were written. It's his fault! Author Joel Chandler Harris worked as a printing apprentice at a Confederate newspaper. During his time off, he would go into the slave quarters and talk with the slaves for hours on end. The stories they told him became the basis for his Uncle Remus tales he would later publish. He claimed that the characterization of his dialogue preserved the folklore he was told by those who told it, so not to diminish their origins. Though the major critiques of Song of the South, beyond the language, are the ways the master and former slave relationships are handled, whitewashed and perfectly amicable. That, on the other hand, can as easily be explained away. 
James Basquette, the star of the film, couldn't even go to the premiere in Atlanta, Georgia, because being black, he couldn't get a hotel room to stay in for the night because of segregation that still existed in the South in 1946. Even though Song of the South made money, the critics of the time were becoming a little weary of the half-animated, half-live-action films Disney was putting out, no matter how visually impressive and or cost-effective they were. Along with its sad distribution history, the lives of much of the main cast of Song of the South didn't turn out much better. Luana Patton died at the age of 57 of respiratory failure. James Basquette died in 1948 of heart failure at the age of 44, two years after Song of the South premiered. And Bobby Driscoll died in 1968 of heart failure due to many years of heavy intravenous drug use. He was 31. But the popularity of Song of the South lives on. zippity doo is part of the modern movie lexicon, while Splash Mountain is a very popular Song of the South ride. And I mean, come on, it's not like Disney ever did anything else that was even remotely racially insensitive. Oh, look at here, look at here. My, my. Why, this is most irregular. Well, I just can't believe my eyes. They ain't dead, is they? No. Dead people don't snow. Or do they? We translate for you. Panda means what Panda means and Panda means that How do you do? Brer Rabbit, wait for the tar baby to say, fine, how are you? But the tar baby, he don't say nothing. Awkward. I mean, it's not like Hollywood did anything racially insensitive all that often. <laughs> oh, regrettable incident. Oh, not unknowing honorable general. Oh, excuse the please. Oh, oh, not wanting make a hurry carry. Oh. Oh, but I would let that stand in my way. Some folks think I's kind of dumb, but I know someday my prince will come. So what you right for I has come. The red, red robin starts ba 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 bing along, along. Stop it! Okay, back to basics. Is Song of the South a racist film? In intent, no. In execution, sadly, yes. The way Uncle Remus and other black characters are treated on the plantation is very much that of the happy slave. Close your eyes and it's almost like you're listening to Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Now, should it be continually banned? Of course not. It's still a beautiful story about a boy who's helped by a man, a black man, overcome his problems in an intelligent and positive way. Think of Dangerous Minds only backwards. And finally, is Song of the South any worse than any other film produced then or before about the Reconstruction Era South? And my answer to that is no. In my opinion, Gone with the Wind is a much more racist film, and it's re-released all the time. They're probably re-releasing it right now, and they'll do it again five minutes later. And let me tell you something. This film should not offend as many people as this sorry excuse for a KKK recruitment video should. In Song of the South, Uncle Remus is actually the hero of the story. A few years ago, casting sessions were held so that Splash Mountain's spoken segments could be updated. Some prominent black actors of the time were asked to read like Uncle Remus. It was reportedly one of the most awkward sessions the casting directors in the sound booth had ever experienced. Yikes. Should Song of the South be released? Of course. It's still a beautiful film and can both educate and entertain at the same time. And I'll tell you one thing. Acting like it never happened is like a slap in the face to all the Disney fans who know it did and love Disney anyway. And as a final nail in the zippity doo -dah songbook coffin, the song zippity doo -dah was actually inspired by a pre-Civil War folk song entitled Zip Coon. God, whoever thought this film would be a good idea in the first place, <laughs> jeez. So is Song of the South one of Disney's best films? No, but it's a good one, and deserves to see the light of day out of the shadowy black market bootleg where it's been hiding for the last 20 some odd years. So Disney, release it. 
with special features, commentaries, and documentaries by experts, some of whom should be black, and as many other special features as you can shoehorn into this long-awaited gem's debut in high def from the Disney vaults. Executives that have been sat down and made to watch the film in its entirety have come to the same conclusion when pointed out that other studios have released films from their archives that are of similar nature. They say we can't because we're Disney. Well, that's all the time we have left for Song of the South. I'm Ty Justice. Thanks for watching. And I'll be zippity doo dah seeing you next time. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on social media and use the hashtag TieJusticeReviews. Awkward.